later, actually, because this uh, last week was the anniversary uh, of the protest that commenced in Gezi Park in Turkey. And I had him on later uh, in the summer to talk about those protests and why people were so outraged against the actions of the Erdogan government. Um, there have been a lot of things that have happened since then. And during the second half hour, shortly after 530 p.m., I will be speaking with him about them. Welcome back to KDVS Davis 90.3 FM, KDVS Davis 90.3 FM. And as I said earlier in the program, for the remainder of the hour today, I am going to be speaking with Bura Bakan. He's the president of the Turkish American Gezi platform. And some of you may remember that I interviewed him, I believe, last summer. And I wanted to bring him back so that we could discuss what's transpired since then. And I will admit I've been a little bit remiss here because I should have brought him back much sooner. But with the passage of time, there is only more to talk about. So, Bura, welcome back to KDVS 90.3 FM. Thank you so much, Richard. Thanks for having me. The other thing I remember about that interview that I can't help mentioning is that you did something quite extraordinary, which you, is that you braved the I-80 corridor to actually come to the station on, on a yes. Friday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I remember running to your office, uh, sweating and being all embarrassed for being late. And you were very kind, uh, welcoming me to your station. Thank you for that. Well, I, I think that's really the only response to someone who, again, would uh, fight their way up Interstate 80 on Friday afternoon from the Bay Area. Um, so let me let me ask you, and I, I have to sort of cover some old ground here just to establish, you know, some background for the audience. Uh, why have you um, become involved in these protests against the, the current government in Turkey? Uh, I got involved, Richard, because in, in, I should say, in my life, when I look at a set of circumstances, I rarely see black and white in most cases. Um, circumstances uh, show as uh, uh, shades of gray, so to speak. And last summer, when the Daisy Park um, uh, protest started, uh, that was the first time in my life I looked at a situation and I immediately knew who was on the right side of this issue because when I looked at the pictures, um, I saw people like myself, regular regular men and women who had an 8 to 5 job or 9 to 6, what have you. And um, after their uh, uh, day jobs, they would go to test and demand for basic human rights. And um, the response to that uh, by uh, the Turkish police, uh, an extension of the uh, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan government, was so brutal. Um, to the extent that some people got killed, uh, some people got very badly injured, some people got into coma. So I just couldn't um, sit and watch the whole thing. And people around me here in the Bay Area, Turkish people or people who uh, have ties to Turkey one way or another, um, felt very strongly that we should do something. And at the time, the first thing we thought of doing was to inform the American public and we started with uh, 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 a show in San Francisco showcasing the pictures of the brutality. So um, I just couldn't sit and watch and be indifferent to what was happening. Now, when you and others in, in the Turkish American com community uh, came together in response to the protests, was there already some pre-existing uh, unhappiness with what was happening in Turkey, or did it, had it all of a sudden crystallized in the minds of many of you? I think it was like any other um, social eruption. It was a tipping point. Um, the ruling uh, Justice and Development Party has been um, in the government since 2000, beginning of 2000, 2012, or late 2000, excuse me, 2002, late 2001. So for 12 years, uh, slowly but surely, this government has been um, 
let's call it for pressing or pressing the lifestyle that we Turkish Americans, most Turkish Americans associate ourselves with because we take the freedoms that are available to us for granted, so to speak. So for years we've been watching this grow, um, but uh, in all honesty, A, we were afraid, B, we felt we were alone, and C, we, we, we looked at Turkey and, well, they're not complaining. Why Why are we so uh, upset about this? I, some of us thought, you know, people in Turkey are happy to look at election results, uh, look at the TV, look at media in general, uh, the press. So I guess it's just us, ourselves, um, getting upset about this. But this event has shown us that um, actually that's not the case. There's so much resentment built. And the tipping point was the summer of last year. And we finally said, okay, I guess we're not alone. And people are willing to uh, take so much risk, uh, risking their lives on the street. Well, it's about time that the Turkish Americans get together and do something as well. Now, uh, when these protests erupted in Turkey uh, against Erdogan, uh, what what ignited them? The let's again, like any other tipping point, event that starts after a while becomes uh, not the point, so to speak. The 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 event that ignited it was that Gezi Park, which is at the center of Istanbul, Taksim Square, um, was planned to be turned into a shopping mall. And the uh, people who enjoy the park, and by the way, anyone who goes to Istanbul can see that there isn't much left in terms of green or, or, or parks. Uh, it is overly built. Uh, anywhere between 13 to 15, 15 million people live in Istanbul. If you if you look at Greece, uh, the entire Greece population is 10 million. Uh, you can imagine the amount of uh, construction uh, in Istanbul, which breaks my heart. But that's another point. So, so uh, uh, I want to say 20, 30 uh, protesters just wanted the park to remain as the park, the Gezi Park that has been there for, for years. And when uh, the police attacked them at 5 a.m. in the morning or 3 a.m. in the morning with, um, while they're sleeping in their tents with tear gas and, and, um, and pepper spray, um, this, uh, this news uh, attracted, obviously, more people to come and support them, more protesters brought, more police, more police brought, more protesters. So this became a um, uh, self-feeding uh, event, so to speak, and all of a sudden um, it was a wildfire. The entire country, almost in every town, every, every, town, uh, every square, there were um, uh, protests to, in, in solidarity with the Taksim. You would see everywhere signs, uh, everywhere is Taksim, everywhere is resistance. So it, it, it started as an uh, environmentalist um, uh, movement, but it quickly turned into where people started demanding freedom of speech um, and basic, uh, basic human rights, civil liberties, um, which, which have which have been uh, slowly taken away from them. Why did the protests uh, dissipate? I I would actually not say so. Um, I would say that the protests changed form because again, remember these these people are. Uh, engineers, doctors, students, uh, professors, accountants, bank tellers, what have you. Um, there's only so much they can do uh, going out there protesting uh, and being uh, tear gassed and uh, being beaten by the police. At some point, they would go back to their homes, and they did. Um, but 
uh, they changed form and, and the evidence. I'll just give you one example. Back in March this year, a 14-year-old uh, boy named Barkin Evan uh, died due to a uh, coma. Um, that uh, uh, he, he, he got in uh, because he got hit by the pepper gas uh, cannon. So he, I think he'd been in a coma for uh, nine months. And when he died, I want to say three million, you can never be exact with these numbers, but um, I, let's say millions of people took this out on the streets and, and um, protested against the police brutality and... Um, uh, and, and everything else. If every other uh, step the, the Turkish government takes to suppress these demands for uh, uh, human rights. So I would say it changed form. Many new uh, TV stations uh, are formed as a result. Um, uh, newspapers, because at the time the media, Turkish media, was showing uh, penguins, which turned today uh, a matter of uh, uh, joke, so to speak. So it changed form, and it is still there. And Barakin had one, I think, um, uh, was just one case as evidence that um, the energy is still there. I'm Richard Estes. This is Speaking in Tongues. I'm speaking with Bura Bakan, president of the uh, Turkish American Gezi Park platform. I'll be back with him momentarily. Businessman actually got sentenced to the capital punishment uh, for accepting $2.5 billion of bribery. Rouhani isn't as kind as Ty uh, Bergon, I guess, uh, in that. Um, yes, um, the, um, many, uh, it's hard to tell if it's authentic or not, but. Um, uh, sound recordings, conversations were taped between government officials trying to figure out how to get rid of the cash that is sitting in their home. And so I, I would assume that the public hasn't responded very favorably to these disclosures. Not, not as much as you would think or hope because Ty Erdogan is brilliant in uh, framing uh, almost everything that goes wrong in Turkey. Um, in, in such way that it is uh, a conspiracy uh, that is rooted outside of Turkey. Uh, and um, this is uh, a, 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 not a military uh, coup, but uh, another way of toppling, uh, an effort to topple down the government in Turkey. And he sold this, he marketed this to the masses, and he's a great communicator, I'll give him that. And um, his supporters bought it. And um, so when you say public, you have to understand in Turkey now, it's split into two because of the polarization. Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the polarization policies he's been implementing, half the country believed in it and half the country wants him gone. Half the country, or a little less than half the country, his supporters um, didn't believe in it. They bought the argument of the conspiracy. Uh, it depends on who you ask. Again, you're listening to KDVS Davis 90.3 FM. I'm Richard Estes. This is Speaking In. Uh, Bora, one of the things that has um, happened recently that um, has gotten quite a bit of a, a attention, even in the international media, has been a, a recent mine explosion in, in Soma that killed over 250 miners. I believe 274 was the last I saw. Uh, and the aftermath uh, of that ex explosion and, and those sad deaths has been quite dramatic, hasn't it? Can, can you elaborate on the explosion and the uh, political conflict that has uh, taken place? At, taken place? Yes, uh, happily. And on that note, uh, let me take a minute and let your uh, listeners know that our website, gziplatform.org, G-E-Z-I platform.org, um, has a link to donate to the victims, to the families of the victims of SOMA incident. We had a fundraising this past Saturday, and uh, we're still um, collecting donations to send them over to 
trauma coaching to help the victims, to help families uh, of the victims of this incident. Uh, the incident itself, um, I think the official number is 301. Um, of minors have lost their lives and many uh, injured. And the reason why um, it's just not, uh, it's called the reason why people were so enraged about this is because Turkey is number one in um, uh, worker-related uh, incidents in Europe, number three uh, in the world. Uh, Turkey is one of the countries, uh, along with uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan, um, a country that didn't find international uh, worker safety uh, agreements. So this is uh, an accident that could be, I don't want to say easily, I'm not an expert, but for sure could be um, uh, avoided, judging by the record, for instance, that a country like Germany or France has, uh, in which uh, no minor has lost life in the last 50 years. So when you have uh, a town that actually, this, this is a big number, but last year I believe about 70 people died, the year before 90 people died in the same mine, and the opposition party actually brought to the fore um, uh, investigation uh, file, and the government uh, shut it down. The ruling party shut it down, claiming it's a waste of time. Well, a few few months later, they have claimed that it's a waste of time. The mining incident happened. So, um, in, in in this, they have blood in, in, in their hands. This is this is not just an incident. This is uh, an accident that um, uh, uh, gave all the signals uh, and the track record of people died before. And uh, just to protect the profits of the, uh, the mine owner, the necessary safety uh, uh, steps weren't taken, and 301 people uh, died. So um, because of that, because people are enraged, and because of that, um, uh, uh, at least uh, people like us and others in Turkey are doing their best to to support the victims. In the the few moments we have remaining, uh, could you uh, provide some uh, guidance as to how people can learn more about the situation in Turkey and uh, your efforts through the platform? When you say the situation, do you mean specific to the uh, mine incident or uh, both in general? Both. Um, um, the, the the mine incident uh, itself and um, in other publications actually, we if you go to our uh, Facebook page, Turk, if you look at Facebook Turkish American Daily Platform, uh, we do post uh, uh, recent articles both in Turkish and English, you can follow some news through that. And um, and also we will be posting uh, the uh, update from the Soma uh, mine and how the monies are allocated, what is being done. So if you look at our uh, Facebook page and if you search Turkish American Gazi platform, uh, we'll uh, keep that current and you'll be able to see, uh, read articles both uh, uh, news in general in, from Turkey and also specific to uh, Soma um, and um, uh, that's the only resource that I can share on the radio station. It, uh, if you could briefly uh, give your perspective on what's likely to happen in the elections in August, I have to turn the studio over in about a minute or two here, but if you could just if you if you would be willing to do that, that would be much appreciated. Sure, I think it's almost given that Recep Tayyip Erdogan will try to be uh, the president in Turkey. We have president and prime minister. President is more of a symbolic role, although he will, he will try to turn it into a more like an executive branch, uh, like the president in here. I don't know who will be the the. Uh, the other side, uh, contender, so to speak, so it's difficult to say if he will win or not, but A, he will be very close to win, or B, he will win, and what will happen after that, 
uh, it's difficult to say he will certainly try to be uh, um, a president that will not uh, be symbolic for sure. Well, thank you very much for being on the program today. Uh, I, I really, again, I appreciate your willingness to be on it, and uh, I appreciate uh, the information that you provide. I think it's very helpful to our audience. So, uh, thank you very much, and good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That was Bura Bakan of the Turkish American Gazi platform. You're listening to KDVS Davis 90.3 FM. I'm Richard Estes. This has been Speaking in Tongues. Please stay tuned to Set in the Woods on Fire with Sean. <laughs>